Police, open up. Police, ma'am. Hello? Open up. Come on. Come on, open up. Hello? Third, 1985, at approximately 5.58 a.m., Richard Beacon, a seven-year-old Long Island boy, shot and killed his father in a heated family argument. Felicia Beacon, the boy's mother, astonishingly claims she then saw her son take off in flight from the patio balcony. What really happened the night of June 3rd? Who was Richie Beacon, and where is he now?
1944, I was sent to Fontenelle Prison on several counts of theft. Name? Rowe. First. John. Age? 31. Date of birth? October 29, 1913. Orphan? Yes. Where? First, uh, Prison was not new to me. I'd lived in them all my life. Various foster homes. In submitting to prison life, that embracing that it, I could reject the world that had rejected me. The sexual behavior, which includes <laughs> males, is, is that correct? <laughs> what? <laughs> the state obliges us to... Uh, Inquire as to whether or not you engaged in the practice of that you practiced. Uh, yeah. Whatever. That word there. Is it written as two words? I have demonstrated, I have determined that once extracted, the application of the hormonal equivalent of the sexual instinct to practical neurology will not only provoke a dramatic reassessment of geriatric research, but will end paralysis as we know it today. Thank you. Hey, this is ridiculous. I ask you, are we to take this charade seriously? I demand that this man be re-examined by the panel on grounds of medical incompetence. I agree.
is. It's putrefacted condensation sustained, allowing molecular coagulation by producing <laughs> biomagnetic gas. I did it. I did it. Dr. Graves? Yes, I'm Dr. Graves. And I've just captured the sex drive. Oh, that's marvelous. It means the molecular coagulation theory holds true. Molecular coag... How do you know that? Who are you? I'm Dr. Olsen. Who? Dr. Olsen. Nancy Olsen. From Boston. Dr. Strick recommended me to you regarding... Your... I... I didn't expect a woman. I didn't expect you to. I've been following your work for years, Doctor. Ever since evaluations of molecular suspension of hormonal conductivity appeared in the science journal at MIT, your discovery of the white cellular clotting predominance in neurasthenia completely altered my understanding of conditional bioflavonoid neuropathology. I wrote my doctoral thesis on your molecular coagulation theory, and I'm now a hormonal specialist. I've come here with the hopes of assisting you. Well... How do you do? Very well, Doctor. Thank you. And now I really should leave you to record your success, but please, feel free to call on me any time that you need. And congratulations, Doctor. You're making medical history. quiet residential community of Glenville was stunned to learn of the strange death of Fred Beacon. It gave everybody the creeps. All the neighbors were afraid to come out their door. It was absolutely the most dreadful thing I have experienced in my entire awful. lifetime. Oh, it was terrible. You know, I heard every shot. You never know. I heard who you every friend single got shot. You think you know people, but you really don't know them, and you live next door to them. You don't. If something like this happens. Richie Beacon's disappearance provoked one of the toughest missing person investigations in Long Island history. The whole thing lasted at least a year. And his face is still on milk cartons. What was found? Nothing. Felicia Beacon became the center of Glenville controversy following her extraordinary account of her son's disappearance. I guess I... I just didn't... I definitely didn't know what he was. I mean... I punished him. His father hit him, just like any kid. But I definitely didn't realize... Realize what? That he was a gift from God. By the time I was 16 years old, I was notorious as a kid with a terrific knack for theft. Foster homes would no longer take me, and I was sent to the boys' reformatory of Baton. There, in the counterfeit world of men among men, I found my true family. 
At Batten, I was astounded by the discovery that each male had a male of his own, and that the world of force and manly beauty loved in that way within itself, from link to link. It was from then on, when they merged in shadow, that each group offered me a puzzle. The stiff, silent males possessed the violence of love, and my life study would be to find it. Sixteen years had passed when the maximum security prison of Fontenot brought me face to face with my deliverance. Jack Bolton, age 28, 175 pounds, 75 inches, formerly a captive of Batten. You know what? You make me want to puke. You want to suck it, you want to crawl for it. Yes, you do. Is it Jack Bolton? Yeah. <laughs> Cannon. Here? Today. Quill. Jack Bolton. Hey, John. Friend of mine, man. Jack Bolton? Johnny Broom. Fatten? Yeah, yeah. I knew. You swallow it by the mouthful, don't you, Bertie? Jeez him by the jug, right? You want it real bad, don't you, punk? Don't you slug? Don't you, pretty boy? Hey, you! Sign! Annoying Mr. Ross. Not me, Chief. That's a good boy. That's a smart little fag. Think fast, faggot. You want it real bad, don't you? Don't you? You want me to shoot it up your hole, is that it, huh? Huh? Go on, marry him. You know you love him. What? Me marry him? I'd watch out for you, right?
Archie was a complicated boy. On the one hand, very intelligent, but at the same time, uh, withdrawn. What's really strange, though, was uh, the, the amount of animosity he would induce uh, in the other children out of nowhere. Like this one kid, Brad. Yeah. Started hitting him for yeah. this. Yeah. Because he didn't believe that he was really a prince and his dad was a king. The weird thing was that Richie didn't fight back. He, he just, just sat there until, until his teach, yeah, teacher came. And he was all bloody. He was a perfect child. A perfect baby. Very independent. Very smart. Never fussed. He always kept himself busy with stories and coloring. He was always doing these private things, private games. All inmates proceed directly to shop. No wrecks today. Thanks a lot, man. Forget it. Guy from Bat. It's loyalty. Got to a shithole. Maybe. Better than this one. No way, man. The guys are straight with you here. You know, you know what's what? Don't be too sure. Hey, uh, you got any rolls? That's a lot, man. Look, forget it, okay? Bad. Okay. I'll see you later. Bolton's reemergence in my life contradicted any memory I had of him as a child. At Batten, he was sullen and small. Even I picked on him. Stay out of my way, Bolton. You hear me? Something about my memory of Bolton disturbed me. But I couldn't put my finger on what it was. All night long, I built an imaginary life of which he was the center. And I always gave that life, which was begun over and over and transformed a dozen times, a violent end. Nancy Olson? I've been trying to reach you for quite some time now. Are you... Is everything all right? Yes, I'm fine. Good. I'm relieved to hear that. I didn't know what happened. I thought maybe you had decided against the internship that perhaps I'd interrupted you at such a critical moment. But it's just that after your terrific success, I wanted to be the first to congratulate you. Hello. Hello, Dr. Graves. Hello? Hello? Dr. Graves? 
Dr. Graves, this is Dr. Olson. Dr. Graves, I know you're in there. Dr. Graves? What happened to your face? Do I look lascivious? Like the pitiful, decrepit result of some hideous indulgence? Huh? Well, take a good look, Miss Dr. Olson, because that's exactly what I am. Dr. Grace. Please, calm me down. Tom, what happened? I accidentally ingested... The serum? Yes. Oh, God. All of it? What are you going to do? There's nothing I can do. You know as well as I, the hormonal system is self-perpetuating. The biomagnetic field is irreversible. I'm a monster. No, you're not. I have the greatest respect for you, Doctor. And of all the people this could happen to, why it had to be you, I just don't know. The fact is, it doesn't disgust me in the slightest. On the contrary, it breaks my heart. a meek soul. People pick on meek souls. It's something in human nature, something very sad about human nature. We have to pick on those that are weaker than us. And that's exactly what started happening at Park Street. During the two and a half years that Richie attended Park Street Elementary School, he allegedly made 47 visits to the nurse's office. His mother was called as many as 25 times, and Richie met with the principal at least 10. Twelve classmates were suspended and three expelled. I was a little kid, and uh, I remember having to pull him out of a few fights in the, uh, in the cafeteria, and uh, even in the playground. For a little kid, he was noticeable. Well, some people felt sorry for him. Most of them wanted to hit him and stuff. It was weird, because he's just the person that you want to see get creamed. Once I, w I was right in the middle of giving him an injection, and he called me fat. So, you know, I mean, I just I could have hurt him or something. I, I just I, I think he was evil. Uh, if it was a bloody nose, it was a sprained ankle. If it wasn't, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, skin knees, it was uh, somebody put something in his milk. Um, once, I, un unfortunately, I, I discovered him and a. Uh, a slightly older boy, uh, Gregory Lazar, uh, in the equipment room. And uh, Gregory had the poor kid over his knee and was apparently uh, 
really giving it to him. Everything the principal said about it was completely a lie. I didn't attack Richie Beacon at all. He just kept bugging me. He kept bothering me every second. He, he, he made me. I got this when I was a kid. This guard was always calling me pretty boy, right? Pretty boy. So I caught him. This is a tough one now, look at this. That was tough, right? Huh. You're a kid, you get something like that, you, you think you're gonna die, you know? This one, uh, I was crashing in church. You know, you should never crash in churches. It's just bad luck. I told me. One over here. I can't really see it. But it's it's right there. It's the pink, see? Uh-huh. I got it in you in LaSalle. No, but it's leading, I think. Anyway. There's nothing wrong with being out in the world, Tom. I don't know why you're so nervous about it. Well, people come down with all sorts of conditions. This is just one of them. Hello. Just ignore them. Reach up to me. Do, 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 do. La, la, la. Don't. Why? I can't. Well, I can't do this. Not now. But, Tom, I'm in love with you. Look at me, Nancy. Think about what you're saying and look at me! Tom! 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 Well, Richie was extremely gifted. Imaginative. 
Always telling these elaborate stories. He was a chronic liar and uh, would often engage the other classmates in these stories of his. And they'd get very angry. He liked controlling people and watching them boil over. I was out one day in the garden. I think it was a Sunday. And all of a sudden, I saw something coming running from the Beacon's house over here. And uh, I thought it was a deer at first, a little deer. But then, as it came towards me, I saw it was a little boy, about five or six. And he was naked. And he came running closer. And he was exhibiting himself right in front of me. As he got closer to me, he squatted down. And then he made a DM right in front of me. He turned around, he got up, he turned around, and he ran away just like a wild animal. I didn't know what to do, so I just came into the house and closed my door. I just was so shocked. Every time I do a job, I get stiff. Every single time. Because you were doing them with, um, what's his name? Nick. That goof of yours. What? I do my job solo, man. You can't do them with somebody else. That's not what I heard. Well, what'd you hear? Hey. Hey, Diego. Nothing. What? No. What? Just that you and Nick were partners or something. Who said that? Don't remember. Who? Look, I don't remember. What do you think you're looking at? You fucking queer. Fucking scum. I think Nick gives a shit what people think. You know what Nick would do? Man, he's busted into a joint. <laughs> you fucking piss all over it. And first, he'd fill it up, you know? He'd Drink or eat, take a bath, it's screwy. <laughs> I'm telling you, that guy. One time, we we're in this banker's joint, right, in Orleans. We? Oui. What? Listen, don't you fucking start with me, man. I mean that, baby. I mean that. Don't you start with me. Well, so what? So we did shit together. We got busted. Big fucking deal. And who the fuck are you anyway? You, you know, you walk around, you try to act like a big shot. Who are you kidding? You are the biggest fucking fruit in this joint. Hey!
It was only a matter of time before Bolton would be accepted by the big shots. Go ahead. And nothing threatened our friendship more. I could tell Rass, the group's kingpin, had an eye for him from day one. I still could not take lightly the idea that people made love without me. How'd you find me? Never mind. Tom, come home. We belong together. How can you say that? I know what I'm saying. I don't belong with anyone. You're wrong. The search is still on for the leper murderer of Priscilla Monroe and possibly four other unidentified leper victims. Already, the venomous cancer has spread to hundreds of innocent men, women, and children, and counts of sexual violence are also on the rise. Be on the lookout for a dark-haired man with intense eyes and a badly infected mouth. You don't know anything about that, do you, Tom? Tom? Do you? It's you, isn't it? You're the leper they've all been talking about. Why didn't you tell me you were contagious? When were you going to tell me this? I was... I was scared that I would frighten you away. You're all I have left, Nancy. What makes you so certain that I'm safe with you? Nancy, I love you. Yeah. 
to think. Tom, I need some time alone to think. Nancy. I'm sorry. I'll call you. Please. Nancy. Nancy. In mid-November of 1984, Richie Beacon was treated at Cloyfield Medical Center for injuries to the thighs and lower back. His parents claimed he'd been hurt by the other kids at school, but, well, frankly, I doubted it. Why? 
I felt they were being purposefully vague with me. There were other strange circumstances surrounding the case. Um, I found an infectious discharge. Uh, it was genitally secreted, um, sharp yellow color. What did you guys used to do? Just stupid junk. Like what? You'd go, like, you're the dad and you're really mad. And, and you know, the son. Like, I just did this thing or something. It's just some stupid game. What kind of game? He just totally forced me to do it. I mean, he. It's like he got in trouble or something. Fun. Well, uh, I didn't do it. He'd just, like, sit there and laugh. And I'd get so mad, I'd just finally do what he says. Totally spank him. Just to make him shut up. It's very odd. But Mrs. Beacon's account of Richie's disappearance, you know, him killing his father and flying away, came directly from one of his stories. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
atmosphere darkened, changed magnetic field. I gotta go. Go ahead. You want a drug, pal? You're a slut, you know that? Anyone ever tell you that? What? Huh? And your little man, he can ride my fucking prick. What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, smile. Look, John. Get lost, will you? If, if they see us coming, if, if they see us together, they're going to start bullshitting about me. Why? I don't know. Just get lost. Why? They think you're... Look, I try to tell them that you're okay. Friendship with Rath and the others filled me with jealousy, but instigated a transformation. I felt myself growing mean, icy, stiff, gleaming like a sword blade. Hey, you! Stop there! Come on, let's go around. shouting they heard but yes we were fighting Fred was under a lot of stress and I was busy Richie kept getting hurt it was a bad period of time in general did your arguments have mostly to do with Richie no they were not at all Fred was angry at me he thought that I wasn't spending enough time with Richie and 
He had to know where I was every second. A neighbor claimed she saw him ripping up your flower beds one night? He was just angry. He'd uh, fired our, our gardener, this Spanish kid, Jose, and he was just very angry at me, so he tore up my flowers. I know that I was wrong, but my child was watching over me. My child was an angel of judgment, and I sinned against the Lord. Gold Street, the residence of Dr. Thomas Graves, the notorious leper murderer who has been the cause of countless deaths in the Centerville area alone. Local authorities have the premises surrounded, and police are presently escorting all other tenants out of the building, which is considered highly contaminated. I think I've been living Take next door to him for three years. Without so much as suspecting what he's doing. I knew something was odd about him. Never forget the first time hey, I made eyes. Get your Dr. Graves mask right here. Authentic master, the local murderer. Was this room more clear? Yeah. Yeah. We want to go to the sky. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
remember thinking was, oh, God, it's Richie. But when I saw his face, it reminded me of this time, years before, when Fred was spanking Richie, and I was watching, and I swear, he looked at me with the exact same expression. It was like some oath in some other language. His face was so weird. It made me feel ashamed. Still, I did. 
did something. Tell you something. Don't jump. Well, come. Wait. Let's talk. You think I'm scum? You think I'm dirt, don't you? Don't you? Tell you something.
every one of you down there is exactly the same. Only you'll never know it. You, you'll never know it. Because you'll never know what, what pride is. Because pride is the only thing that lets you stand up to misery and not this kind of misery. But the kind of misery the whole stinking world is made of! days later, Rass took Bolton with him on an attempted escape from Fontenot. Rass made it as far as Orleans. Bolton was shot by a prison guard. After Fred heard about everything, he bought this gun. I told you! I told you! And he came home one day and he just started going totally crazy with it. Huh? Richie, go away! Hey, just finish Richie, go to your no. room! Richie, get out of here! Just go! Don't, 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 shut the fuck up! You know, he's, he's you. flinging it all over the place and he's showing it to Richie. So when he fell asleep on the couch later, I put the gun away in the drawer. But sometime in the middle of the night, he got up and he just started in again. He just, he was smacking me around and screaming his head off. And of course it woke up Richie. Uh -huh. no. But Fred was like some crazy man. He just Tell kept me, coming at me and coming at me. me. And he just <laughs> threw the lamp at me, which knocked me down. Tell me! I just remember him coming at me around the throat and me trying to hold his arms down, but he was like steel. And I just thought, this is it. And then all of a sudden, I hear this explosion. It was like a bomb. And then another. And then Fred just collapses on top of me. I look up and Richie's standing there with the gun. I think he looked at me and then sort of took off toward the window. I was pulling Fred off of me when I saw him standing on the ledge. And I screamed. I thought he was going to jump. And then all of a sudden, he did. He just jumped off the ledge and went up. Like a, a wind or something had come and taken him because he was so light, but it wasn't the wind. He just took off. It was so weird. When I ran and watched him go up, he just flew up. 
and I called to him, and he sort of tilted my way before he kind of rolled out of sight. My little boy. <laughs>